Starlink has set itself up to be the ultimate in portable and off-grid internet, and the Mini takes it to a whole new level. Better yet, the users like myself have been begging for a 12 volt or a DC direct version to power the dish for a really long time. If you're not familiar with the Mini, it's roughly the size of a piece of paper, about an inch or so thick, and it plugs directly into one of these, at least we're gonna figure out if we can today. A lot of people who use Starlink are off-grid or nomads and like myself, run off of large batteries, much larger than this one sitting right here. So the great thing about this option here is with the traditional Starlink setup, we have to convert from our batteries, DC, to AC, the wall outlet, and then back to DC and then go to the dish. This is unnecessary, it wastes energy because every time you go through one of those conversions, there's a little bit of a boss, and it adds complexity. The mini dish here is already a drastic cut in power consumption over the larger dishes. But whenever we take out the DC, or the AC rather, and we go directly from the battery to the dish, we can take that power consumption down even further. Another thing to consider is that whenever you're traveling or camping or you're a nomad in a van, oftentimes you don't have a ton of the AC power plugs to just go around and plug everything into, especially a large one like this. But everyone is gonna have a 12 volt battery. So today we're gonna test out actually connecting the mini directly to a car battery, see if this is possible, how easy it is, and is this gonna be an actual game changer for us. As I'm recording this, the hurricane burrow just blew through Texas and left about a million and a half people without power and without internet access in many cases. So this is something that I'm really excited about because the mini can actually be utilized in disaster relief in emergency situations where your internet for the entire city has gone out because something like a hurricane has blown through or you're a disaster relief and you're going to take care of these places and you need something that is portable, lightweight, that you can set up instantly. I mean, in about two minutes, you can have high speed internets, the ability to communicate with anybody back home, your command center or whatever it is. So when you get your mini in the box, you're gonna have the mini, of course, you're gonna have the kickstand, which comes off and you're going to have a pole mount that can slide on where the kickstand is. You're also gonna get a 15 meter DC cable. It's got the 5521 barrel plugs on each end, double mail, and it's gonna have the AC brick, which I may or may not have dropped into the lake during my last speed test video. And it was only underwater for about 15 seconds. Still works. The cool thing is, this thing is IP67 rated, assuming that you actually have everything plugged in correctly, which I didn't have this plugged in at the time, so I'm sure there is some water in here. And on the back side in here, these little grommets right here, they actually plug in and they keep everything sealed up nice and tight. So the main purpose of this video, as I've already mentioned, is to see if we can get rid of this brick. I wanna introduce this Orion 1000 Golden Mate battery. It is actually really cool. When Golden Mate reached out to me about doing a review on this battery, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do because my entire off-grid system here, it functions on 48 volts and this is a 12 volt battery. Then the Starlink Mini came along and I think this is absolutely a match made in heaven. This particular battery, because of its size, because of its lightweight portability, like if this was a standard flooded lead acid battery or AGM, I couldn't just pick it up like this. I think it weighs 33 pounds. It's got a really cool, which I kind of thought was gonna be gimmicky at first, I'll be honest, a really cool battery indicator on the top right here. It tells you exactly where you're at percentage wise. What do we need to make this happen? There are two ways that I see going about it. The first one is to use alligator clamps like this. And the simple thing to do is plug the positive onto positive and clamp the negative onto negative. In case you're wondering, 5521 stands for 5.5 millimeters on the outside, that's the outside diameter, by 2.1 diameters on the inside, and that's the inside diameter. The inside is positive and the outside is negative. Right now is a good time to stop and say, if you want any of these products, I'm gonna put links in the description below. That way you don't have to try to find them for yourself. These are gonna be affiliate links. And if you do buy through these links, I will get a small kickback. 
it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's just a way for the manufacturers to say thanks to me. So if you take your voltmeter and you stick the red prong inside this and then touch the outside with the black one, you're gonna read 13.6 volts or whatever your battery says. So my goal was to take this barrel adapter right here. It's a female and female. Plug this in here and then plug this end here, all right? And then I'm gonna run the original Starlink gray cable with the grommets on it into the Starlink dish. It doesn't work. I played around with this for about an hour yesterday and was crazy disappointed and just about ready to give up because no matter what I did, I would plug this in and it wouldn't get anything. Now, someone in the comments section, let me know why. Right here, if I measure this, I get 13.7 volts or 13.8 volts. And if I take this off, I get the exact same voltage. For whatever reason, maybe the amperage isn't capable of pushing as much as many amps. Nonetheless, if I plug this directly in to the back right here, right here, blue light comes on. The dish is powering up. I'm gonna set this aside right here. We're in, back in the woods under some trees, so it's not gonna work, but I'm going to show you that the network is going to come on. All right, we've got mini room. Trying to get to it. It takes a second to get here. Unsecured network. There it is. All right. So as you can see on my app right now, I'm connected to the Starlink. It says optimizing connection. I'm in the trees. There's no way I'm actually gonna get anything here. But you can see that it's working. I verified that it'll actually connect. So why did I want to be able to plug directly into the unit with this guy versus this guy? Well, you've probably picked up on it already, but remember when we talked about these little grommets keeping this thing watertight? Well, this thing doesn't have it. So if we plug in with this, we can leave it out in the rain, which is IP67. And if you're wondering, that means you can drop this thing into three feet of water, one meter, and it can stay down there for 30 minutes, assuming that it's actually plugged in. With this, it's not gonna be watertight. And you could probably put some little gaskets or o-rings or grommet or something around here in order, in order to make it but i wanted to stick with the original we were going to look at this thing while it was plugged in all right check it out right here it shows us that we have 36 watts going out and we're at 92 percent you know i was really hoping that it was going to show us uh, how much time we had left on it and it doesn't but that's okay i'm going to calculate and show on here how long this would last. It's Now it's showing 36, 37 watts right here, but this is while it is still trying to figure things out. After it sits for a few minutes, it actually stabilizes at right around 20 watts. This is a 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery and it has 100 amp hours, which comes out to 1,280 watt hours. All right, if this thing is going at 20 watts, will give us 64 hours of runtime. So you can run this thing for 64 hours nonstop without putting any charge onto this. Now, of course, if this was your car battery, you could run it, you know, run your alternator, like start your car up every once in a while. You might wanna do it a couple times a day and you would be just fine. So that's what I'm trying to say, guys. If you've got your battery, this one is nice and lightweight and portable relative to its size and output and your Starlink Mini, and between the two of these, you have an incredible amount of internet connectivity for a really long time. I'd shown you previously that you can run it off the AC side of this Blue Eddy, and that'll last you about five hours. If you're interested in more things like the Starlink Mini that can be your ultimate internet connectivity device, check out one of these videos over here. Talk to you on the next one. Oh yeah, I've got this guy. I wonder if it'll work.